this video is probably not for everyone, but I just want to put this out there and talk about the history of um, why I, I wanted to build up a, a Mirage. Um, so it sort of started when I was about 16, um, around the, you know, mid late nineties. And, um, I was into like hot four magazines and, and, you know, my friends were at the time as well. And, uh, my cousin bought a Honda CRX, one of the older ones. And it was really cool. He did it up, put a body kit on it and stuff. And, um, it was super cool. And at that time, you know, I really wanted to get a Mirage, you know, Mirages were still brand new, so they were kind of pricey. And the MR Lancers were also on my list. They were very cool. And um, so we went to my dad and his dad and me and my cousin, we went to, um, yeah, it was like a sort of, I can't remember what it was. It was some sort of, um, you know, farm sort of uh, show thing. And they had a, a Mirage, a Lancer there for test driving. And it was the MR. And so, you know, we um, took it for a test drive and, this is the MR in the driveway of our house and I whipped my camera out and took a couple of photos and um, yeah, I remember that. Um, it was pretty cool, it, you know, it drove pretty well. Uh, yeah, you know, it had a nice little amount of power at the time and it was a nice car and I was, you know, I was, I was really stoked to drive in it. Um, so fast forward to a couple of years ago, this is the Mirage that I bought. Um, and although, you know, this was a really fun little car and, and I was so stoked to get the Mirage, you know, I'd, I'd never actually driven a Mirage and been in one. I'd driven a, a Lancer. My sister had a 1.5 litre CE Lancer manual and I used to drive that sometimes and I loved it. Um, but yeah, I'd never had a Mirage, never driven in a Mirage, never been in one. Um, so this was my first experience that like, test driving. It was my first time in a Mirage and, um, I bought this off a guy not too far away from where I live and, um, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, driving through the hills with a friend and up until, yeah, this, this point when I was driving through the hills with a friend and the bonnet came loose and flung up, it bent the bonnet up and managed to pull it down and, and sort of temporarily fix it so we could get home and um yeah that was a real bummer and at that point I'd, I looked and inspected things closer and I realized the car had been in an accident and had been sort of dodgily repaired and thing, a few things were bent and out of out of place so I considered you know panel beating it you know fixing it myself paying someone and and around that time um, I was scouring the ads on Facebook for uh, mirages and parts and someone had a, another mirage come up. Um, but in the, in, before all that happened, actually, I went out and got these, um, Lancer rims, um, they're the wrong stud pattern, but I have had, had still got plans to change the stud pattern to fit them. Um, did a short shifter kit mod that was the stock um, well that wasn't stock but that was the um shifter that came with the car I put a different on different one on since i extended the steering wheel i had this old fake omp steering wheel at home so i chucked that on and that um that was pretty fun it, it changed the, the feel um yeah worth doing uh, i went and scoped out some new seats at a car shop but i haven't gotten it yet um, and I've been looking at different engines and what fits and, um, since I've put these pictures together, I, um, realized there's a lot of other engines you can choose, but one engine choice that I haven't seen done, um, would be putting a 2004 to 2006 Colt, Mitsubishi Colt, 1.5 liter Mivec 4G15. It's the double overhead cam, uh, engine and it also has Mivec. Don't think it's it's not the more advanced Mivec with um, you know the lift and everything as well, but it's still you know it's Mivec and um, there'd be some extra power in there to tune in the thing. 
Um, yeah, and, and this is an all out. Oh no, this actually this one's not all alloy. This is a um, cast iron block, and it's very similar to the um, CE's one for four G one five. So it's a potential cheap engine swap that I don't think there's much to do um, to fit this in. I think you can use the standard engine mounts from the CE and the, this will bolt onto those. I think, now I'm not 100% sure because I don't know, I've only seen one person that's actually done this swap. Um, I think this engine mounts straight up to the, the, to the gearbox but you do need to have the plate from the CE. Um, there's like a little thin metal plate that goes between the gearbox and the engine. So I can't confirm that for sure, but it looked like the person that I'd seen that had done this had kept the original gearbox and kept that original CE plate, and then that helps the fitment. But again, I, I can't really confirm this you know, without trying it myself and I haven't seen anyone else that's done it um, so that's a potential engine that could go in uh, the other one is the 2006 to whenever it finished um, for a 91 which was the newer Colt engine again it's pretty much the same engine but it's a complete redesign actually it's not the same engine it's a 1.5 litre it's twin cam it's Mivec it's all alloy um, it's back to front configuration, so you inlet air intakes at the front, exhaust is at the rear. There are some advantages to that, um, weight distribution for sure, and this has a plastic um, air intake as well at the front, uh, slightly more lightweight, but having the exhaust at the rear actually shortens the exhaust, and then therefore you've got less um, exhaust length and less weight, uh, and it does redistribute that you know, fairly heavy, I guess, exhaust manifold at the rear of the engine, making it closer to the center of the car. Um, you know, so there's that, I guess. Yeah, it's it's something to consider. Um, these, these engines make a little bit more than the previous 4G15 MIVX. And they're, as far as I'm aware, another pretty much straight bolt-in, um, similar to the 4G15, I think. Again, I haven't seen anyone that's done this swap, um, so it's hard to, to really know for sure, um, but I've looked into it with as many pictures and, and as much detail as I can through analysing the bolts and the everything, where they all go from those pictures, and they look um, very similar. So I'd, you know, I'd love to get one and then just try and put it in and see, see what I need to do it. That's a, it's an option. Um, yeah. Other options would be to go with what, what everyone else is doing nowadays is the, um, the 4G 60, no, 69 is it? I think it is. Um, the 2.4 liter single overhead cam Mivac. That's a great engine swap. Doesn't weigh too much more than the CE's engine. Um, and there's other engines as well that, you know, you could, you could fit in, but, um, yeah, for now, I'm just going to stick with the stock engine, which is the 4G15 single cam. So this is the Mirage I'm working on now. I bought a second Mirage and initially I bought this as a spare sort of a parts car because the engine wasn't running well and, um, it had the suspension that I wanted. It's got coilovers and those coilovers were about 1500, 12 to 1500 brand new. And they're, you know, nice little sort of mid range, fairly decent coilover. They're not like the cheap, nasty ones that you get. Um, and yeah, I was almost going to buy them brand new, but then I saw this ad come up. The coilovers are only like a year old or something. And, um, I thought, well, might as well just get the whole car, then I've got extra parts and stuff. And it's got rims on it, and I thought, yeah, why not? Turns out this the body's, you know, it hasn't had any accidents. It's straight. Um, engine was no good in it, but, yeah, I, I thought, well, I might as well use this. 
So I decided, yep, this is going to be the car. Scrap the other one. Um, this is just some pictures of playing around with some old stereo gear that I've got that I will eventually get a new box and mount the old amp up and everything. Um, so this is an article actually that's interesting. And this is the reason why I want to stick with the 4G15, um, the standard engine for now. Because back in the early, or oh, this was early 2000s, I think, 2000 or 2001, uh, Hot 4s did a um, a little, a few pages on a um, Mirage and testing different resonators to see if there's any difference. And they put a slightly larger resonator, air resonator on the, um, in the, on the Mirage and they picked up as you can see from the dyno in the um, blue line is the stock power this is at the wheels and the red line is with a slightly larger air resonator like just pretty much just unscrew the old one screw the new one on that's all they've done and you can see there's like a big chunk of of power for this mod um, picked up in the mid-range and it's about three to four kilowatts at the wheels. And that carries right through from, you know, like high 2000 RPMs all the way up to maybe four or some 4000 RPM. Yeah, two, 2800 to 4000, which is where you do, you spend a lot of time driving on the road. And um, even if you're at the track, um, you know, there's, there's some small amounts of power up the top end as well. Um, they did test other size resonators, but, you know, this is back in early 2000, so they, they were sort of limited to what they could find. Now, you know, fast forward to 2023, um, I have a 3D printer, you know, I have some CAD software, I have, um, tools that I can design the, a, a resonator that in all different sizes, so I, I'm going to... Um, design a few different size ones and um, see what sort of result I can get and uh, more or less I'm just curious about this I think with newer cars the newer the car the less effective um, or the, you know playing around with resonators is going to be because they've really refined those cars a lot you know older cars they didn't have cold air intakes and things like that and more modern cars from sort of mid 2000 up they started putting in cold air intakes because there was obviously a you know benefit there, and um, they were generally saved those mods for like the sports cars. Um, but um, the Mirage didn't get any of those sort of sporty features. Um, so you know, a cold air intake is another thing that you know you could pick a, kilo, a couple of kilowatts up. Um, Interestingly, they, they put on a like a five liter bottle during this test and they didn't record the dyno, but they said that it, um, it picked up a, a um, you know, a, a chunk of power at the top, um, like at the bottom and then it sort of smoothed out and then picked up more at the top. So you know, it makes me wonder, did they pick up around the same sort of power figures as this, but then up the top it kept increasing, so they picked a couple more kilowatts up, and they said, it. you know, the test that was only for academic purposes because they had no room to fit that. But yeah, again, with my, like, 3D printing something, I could fit as big a resonator in there as, as, I, want, as I want, really. Um, so, you know, we'll try that out. Um, the only other mod this engine had was a two liter cat back exhaust. Um, and again, you know, this is a really gutless engine in compared to today, but you know, everything has a lot more power, but these little engines still have a little bit of potential naturally aspirated and they were never really explored back when they were early, you know, late nineties, early two thousands when the Mirage were really popular and they were brand new and they were one of the top hot four sort of cars that people did up more or less as a show car with like body kit and rims and everything but um people did the engines up as well people turboed them they 
no one and and everyone knows this today that like no one wanted to tune no one wants to tune these things and back going back you know no one wanted to tune them and i think that's just this it's it's strange that it, no one ever wanted to tune these and i think you couldn't tune them easily um in the earlier models because they had the models that had the um steel case ecu they weren't easily easy to tune but everything is ones and zeros and it is possible to tune anything if you put in enough effort you could potentially tune it but the amount of effort and cost you'd probably have to put in it wouldn't be worth it and i think that was sort of the reasoning behind why no one wanted to tune them and then when they did come out with the plastic ecu case um i just don't think anyone really cared for it and maybe it took people a while to recognize that um that the plastic cases were tunable now but because they're such a low powered engine it was sort of like well what's the point but there are people that have tuned them not a lot of information that you can find on that but um that have got substantial um benefit from from tuning it these things from the factory were very under tuned um and there's people in malaysia and in philippines and, and some different countries i think that these are very popular and they're still tuned today um and there's slight variations of this engine and the, in the protons and the weirers and, and stuff like that um that are tuned um and i have seen a few clips and examples of that um, and they pick up a decent little power, um, power, for, you know, advan um, gain from tuning the ECU. Um, but I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to go down that route because nowadays you can get a kit ECU so cheap um, that I'm going to build my own. I bought a motherboard for one. I just need to get the, the parts and build my own and again it, it's hard to find people with genuine dynographs showing you how much gain there is on an engine like this um i have found a couple of clips that were really useful one guy was in jamaica and he had a, a nissan pulsar or something with a, a 1.5 liter engine really similar specs to this engine really similar power to this engine similar weight and everything and he did um tunes cars and he did a um like a, a quarter mile run using um draggy or whatever it is like one of the cheap high accuracy gps uh, measuring devices and he did a few comparison videos and there was a few you know hundreds of a second there for sure like half a second to a second or something that he pulled just from only tuning the ECU in a car that had similar power, it was heavier, and had an automatic gearbox. And I think you picked up close to a second um, just from tuning it. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I found that really interesting that um, that there was some power to be had. And then not many people have explored that. A lot of people now, it's become super popular to turbo these things. And, you know, why not? Because turbos are so cheap these days, but it's still pretty expensive. And um, I'm not going to go down that route for now. I'm not ruling it out. But just for now, I just wanted to explore what's possible with the, the 4G15 with some cheap basic mods, you know, and these mods can carry over to another engine or another build um so they're they're definitely that's my reasoning behind it it's sort of like well i'll spend a little bit on this thing to tune it and if i get some really great results i might tune it further um but there's some real basic mods you can do and so i'm just going to list those that the resonator mod that i haven't got the perfect configuration for that but there's proof um and evidence through the the dinos that these guys in the hot fours make um, have shown that that there is power to be had in that back in that same sort of era cold air intakes were really popular and um, 
pod filters were, were pretty popular and still popular today. But I've seen enough evidence to show that on a small, low-powered engine like this, you lose a lot of low-end power with the pod filter and you only pick up the top-end power. So I, I would, on an engine like this, I would advise against that. I saw in a, a Holtec uh, video where they dynoed a S2000 and the guy that's the tuner was convinced that it was going to lose a chunk of power and it would pick some up in the top end. And that's what you used to see back in the day with these en smaller engines. And what they surprised the guy, but because the engine makes so much more power and uh, it revs higher and everything, I guess, um, it, it made a ton of more power. It made, it made substantial you know, gain to the power over the stock filter. Um, but what he saw in the dyno, you could see at the very sort of beginnings of the, the power figures that are up to, you know, 100 horsepower. So it did um, lose or maybe 50 kilowatt range or below, you know, it did lose a little bit of power. But because that engine is so powerful and you're not really spending much time down there, um, it was so negligible, you know. But for a build like this, I think it's, you know, it it's hit and miss a little bit maybe. It may gain you some great results, but I think to be on the safe side, you'd really want to do cold air intake. Um, just having a, a pod filter in the engine bay, you know, does. Um, you're breathing in more hot air from the engine under that engine bay. Uh, it's not really getting like a huge benefit of sort of airflow in that engine bay um you know it just it's a lot of sound it's a lot of noise and i don't think it's really much gain so i think cold air intake with a k and panel filter is the, definitely the way to go um and i've seen just by modifying the original air box and sticking a, a cold air intake you know, sort of to the front of the car and the grill somewhere into that, pick up a couple of kilowatts in the top end. No loss in power in the in the low revs. So that, I think, would be worthwhile doing, you know. And just playing around with the intake, there's definitely, you know, you know, four, four kilowatts throughout the whole rev range is possible um, with the resonator mod and a cold air intake and a K&N air filter. You know, there's a chunk of power there that's um, to be had. So why not do it? And that's near, not free, but, you know, pretty close to it. Um, so that's something I'll be exploring. And I don't really just want to do it to see what kind of gain I can get. Um, it, oh, we'll get a two-inch exhaust on it um, with a fairly quiet muffler. I really don't like little underpowered four cylinders that have an obnoxiously loud exhaust system i just think it's sort of pointless because it it sounds like the car's going fast but it's actually going slow you know if you watch a video of a car with loud exhaust and you turn the sound off it look you're like oh it's actually pretty slow and that driver's just not a very good driver they're just driving erratically with it sort of um or the car has no grip or bad suspension or something you know um so, you know, it's a little deceiving, but, uh, so I think what I want to do is, is get the standalone ECU, tune it, I think, do these resonator mods, you know, service the engine. Um, one other small mod I will do is, is get a, um, a throttle body, bore it out and put a larger butterfly in it. And I have heard that, and also port match that then to the intake manifold. I have heard that that makes a nice little gain. You know, it, it's it's definitely noticeable. It changes the, the engine characteristic a bit. So I'd like to do that. I think that would be worth doing. And then change the, you know, intake, mods, exhaust, and then standalone engine management. And that's, that's all I'm going to do. But I think all those mods will be worth doing because the ECU, the exhaust... Um, a carryover mods that I can take to another build if I scrap this engine. The other mods, um, you know, minimal cost and it'll be fun to do to see what I can get out of the thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that from the research that I've been doing, as long as my engine's healthy, um, that, you know, I think 
when you look at this dyno graph, I think oh, I'm going to be heading up to sort of the um, at least into the low 60 kilowatts at the wheels, you know, maybe 65 kilowatts at the wheels. Not a great deal of power, really. But, you know, I, I want to do it. I want to, I want the engine to just feel a little bit more responsive and a little bit more um, on the throttle. You know, I've, I've driven some sports cars and the one thing I notice about those is when you blip the throttle, the, the response is more instantaneous with your passenger cars, your sort of standard cars, the the throttle response feels more dull, more um, dulled down a bit, and the response is slower. And when you, you want, you're zipping around a course, or you know, trying to click it into gear, and but the throttle between gears, you want that sort of instant response. So I think if I can get a more improved response, a little bit more low down torque, uh, I've heard many people say that, um, tuning the engine on these you surprise you surprising you know how much power more power it makes so with you know my rough calculation the mods that i'm doing it should make close to the same stock power as uh the 1.8 liter the 4g 63 which is an 86 kilowatt engine it makes another maybe 20 or so newton meters of torque not not massively powerful engine but it's a real popular swap into these things and they are heavier and so I see a lot of benefit in just keeping this engine because it's cheap doing some of these mods that not many people have done and sort of documenting it because I think it's just an overlooked thing and and the mods that I'm doing if I just decide yeah I want to turbo this thing I haven't spent much money on it and they'll all benefit me if I do a turbo build. Having the exhaust already from the cat back is going to be great. Then I just need to install the turbo, plummet, you know, manifold. Um, I've already got the computer. I just need to re retune it. And, you know, the rest of it is pretty easy from there. So um, we'll see. Uh, but I think if I can get this thing up to around the same power as a 1.8, then that's, that's pretty cool. And... Um, and it, it's going to be a track car, sort of a, a fun car and as well. So I, I don't need bucket loads of power or anything um, for a start. I just want to have a fun, have fun with it and, and see what I can get out of the thing. And um, yeah, and I'm going to go from there. But um, I'm, I'm really interested to see what it, what I can get out of this stock little engine with, you know, minimal, minimal modifications. And I'll spend a lot more time, I think, on the brake suspension, um, you know, getting the thing handling nice, braking nice, getting the in interior set up that's comfortable for me and, um, you know, just fixing any little problems that, are, that need fixing and getting the thing running well, I think, is, is a real is a big deal for me and then getting it looking nice um so that, that leads me to um body kit i got some side skirts mr side skirts i've recently got a mr front lip that matches the um bumper that's on you see on this picture i've got the old style headlights old style bumper and I actually prefer that look and i'm going to keep these rims on it for now they're pretty you know, pretty okay i would like to get 16 inch rims these are 15s um i did get some uh ch lancer calipers um the other day um considering putting in the 256 millimeter uh rotors i thought about getting the 276 rotors and oh uh, you know that's what a lot of people will do but having sort of looked at what I want to do with this car, how much power it's making and everything, um, just putting fresh brakes on it, fresh pads, like high quality sporty pads um, and good brake fluid is probably going to get you better results than putting bigger brakes on there. Because if you, if you go and put bigger brakes on there and you don't have good pads um, or good fluid, then 
you're going to cook your brakes, warp your rotors, and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, those are the things to consider, I think. It's it's not always about chucking the biggest brakes you can, you can cram into these things. Because um, if you're just running standard pads, it's not going to break that much better. Um, and I don't know what people are always running, but I just see it's sort of like a common thing that people think, oh... I need to do brakes, you know, I'm going to turbo the thing, so i got to do brakes, so i got to go out and, and get, like, the biggest brakes I can cram in this thing. And I, I don't know, like, if that's necessarily always needed for most people's build, I think, yeah, brake fluid, and, you know, there's a, I can't remember the brand name, but there's a brand stuff, um, brake pads called Red Stuff and Yellow Stuff, and and those things are, are really aggressive and um granted they'll probably wear your rotors out quicker but um those things are what you want i think if you're going to be putting this thing under a lot of loads a lot of braking and tracking it track daying it and things like that um yeah that that's definitely going to be a huge benefit um so I would like to put slightly bigger rotors up and brakes up the front because I think 236 is quite small. Um, I'm not going to bother th with discs on the rear unless I find an easy easy install or setup. There's a few, th few options that I'm looking at that I don't know if it's possible or not yet, but it seems to not be talked about and discussed in forums and things. So there's a couple of options that... that might work that I'm going to look into um, and and test out. For now, one one option I'm just going to do is is chuck in new fluid and new rotors, two fifty six rotors with the larger um, caliper that I've got from the CH Lancer, and I think that's going to be a good recipe with you know some maybe red stuff brake pads or something, some high quality brake pads really is, is going to help uh, braking immensely. Um, on the rear, if I'm going to leave the stock um, drums on, I'll probably just put some um, like heavy-duty Bendix shoes in there or something, so they're a little bit more grippy. Um, but the braking in the rear is not hugely important because you don't brake that much, like that much is not force is not used on the rear as much so the front is really the critical um, components uh, but I would like to have some good stuff up the rear as well um, I'm looking at putting some CH drums on the rear if that's a possibility because um, that should be a pretty easy swap if they fit on and they're about 20 mil millimeters larger than the um, CE stock ones. The CE has like 180 something millimeters and the CH has 200 and something. So it's about 20 millimeters bigger. Not a huge difference, but then it would match the front rotors because they're off the CH as well. So I think that could be a nice little, little upgrade with just some, you know, high quality, um, like racing brake fluid and, um, some sort of semi racing brake pads. I think that's going to work really well. Um, having a big, powerful um, handbrake in the back is actually kind of cool because I enjoy doing the uh, handbrake every now and then. So that's it's going to grip pretty hard with that bigger um, and more bitey shoes on there. Um, yeah, I, I need to fix up the front bumper and get these side skirts put on as well. You can see there's a hole in the front bumper. I'm going to 3D print um, a piece of black plastic or something and fill that hole in. Um, put the lip on as well. Uh, the paint needs fixing. I might just sort of scrub it back and then respray it with some clear coat just for now, just so it looks a bit better. Respray the um, side skirts as well and the front lip because they're the wrong color. Um, at some point, um, if I keep these rims, I may respray them, um, just like a more um, standard sort of silver, more like that 
silver you see on the wheel adjacent the the rims um just slightly different a little bit more i don't know we'll see i may just leave it um but yeah that's sort of it for the outside i do have a wing that i got i don't have a picture of it but it's the it's a uh vrx one of the vrx wings and um it looks okay it's a bit gumby looking but it's the only one i could sort of find at the moment it's impossible to find a, a cyborg wing there's some guys on facebook that were making replicas and i put an order in um i sent them an email i sent them a messenger just to say hey was there any update on that it's been a few months and i haven't heard back from them so i'm skeptical whether or not i'm gonna actually get anything from them um if they don't send me anything or update me i'll just get to make my own um it'll be a bit of a process but i'm looking at 3d printing one um yeah or f who knows um but yeah I'll, I'll look into that um so this is just stripped out picture of the car um just cleaning it a bit um i was gonna remove all the sound editing stuff in this but after getting one can of it and only removing that much you can see in the picture a little bit from the other side too you can see like there's some on the floor uh that was a whole can and i only, only got that much off so you know that was a fun experiment but i then realized you need to buy dry ice um i found a supply and you can get it pretty cheap so i could buy a bunch of dry ice and then you just sit the dry ice on the um sand ending stuff and until it you know sort of hardens or whatever and you can just peel it off then um it's pretty clean but it doesn't really weigh much and it does function it, do, it does keep the noise down a little bit so i decided after doing that little patch that i'm just going to leave it i'm not going to bother with that one i don't think uh yeah this is just some some pictures of the engine swap this is the old engine coming out and i left the gearbox in it was pretty tight it was pretty tricky to get this thing out um but i did it i managed to get it done uh yeah i had to twist the thing around i didn't have one of those little engine and crane adjuster things but you know having one of those would have been you know uh, greatly um it would have sped things up a lot let's say but i got it done and a lot of wiggling around and moving things and it eventually went in um i think i had to take off the starter motor or the alternator um and um, really just sort of move it you know tilt the thing a bit move it into a few different positions move it up move it out move it in move you know eventually it came out um so that's the engine that came out it had some issues with it so i just thought well i'm just gonna swap the whole thing and that's the engine from the the first car i bought put in it's a bit cleaner looking um yeah it's a nice engine it runs well and um that went in and everything's pretty much bolted up now i think i might need to get under there and tighten a few things and just check before i start driving it around um so when i put the thing in it it, it cranks over but it wouldn't start uh now i'm running the same stock computer the engine was running in the old one just very badly and it had it was, um, needed new a bunch of new things and i didn't know the history of it so i thought i'm just gonna scrap that one out and swap in this one that i know is good that was my thinking at the time and i just re went with that um and yeah so i tested this thing it, it does run i poured some petrol into the intake cranked it over it runs runs fine won't run off of the you know the fuel pumps i'm thinking is it the fuel pump is it the air in the lines is it the fuel filter i changed the fuel filter i changed the fuel pump um no change i changed the loom wiring i changed the um got in there with the multimeter and i tested a few different wires um 
to the fuel pump. I was getting voltage. I was about to change the loom wire to the fuel pump. And I just sort of left it because I got a bit disheartened and then the weather's changed. And um, yeah, I was considering just paying a mechanic to look at it and, and see what's wrong and try and fix it. Um, and it wasn't until like a couple of weeks ago, I was just looking through forums and, and came across someone mentioned something about um, the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, oh, what do you call that anti-theft device thing in it? The immobilizer. And um, I sort of ruled, I ruled that out already because I'm like, well, it was running the stock computer and all I'd done is swap the engine and I know that the engine was running beforehand. So, and the engine is just a dumb lump of metal. You know, the computer doesn't know that I've swapped the engine. You know, it just, you know, it, it doesn't, um, it's no different. In theory, that's what I'm thinking. And, you know, they shouldn't, shouldn't cause a problem. Um, but then I remembered, hang on, I, because it wasn't running, I swapped the computer. I put the, um, computer out of the 2003 model in, which is a different computer, obviously, but, um, it's also one of the, um, plastic box ones, which, which is tunable. So I thought I may as well put that in in case I choose to tune it at some point. Um, and yeah, that's, it wasn't running, but it dawned on me that I'm like, oh, well, even if the, it should be running on the old computer, it's not going to run with the, the standard key which, mind you, the standard key was just a cut without the, the um, fob on it, but it was running anyway. And I don't know if having these things sit around for too long without using the fob, they, you know, you've taken the battery out too much that you may need to reintroduce the fob um, because it, it didn't have a fob key with it and it was working. Um, yeah, so I don't know. But um, I thought, well... I changed the computer, so I'm going to have to use the old key. So it's like, why don't I think of this? Um, chuck the, the old key next to the, you know, ignition barrel when I cranked it over. And lo and behold, it started up. And I was just like, <laughs> can't believe it. You know, can't believe that I overlooked that. But I was so, I was so happy that it's running now and the engine sounds fine. Um... It's a little hard to get into gear, especially in reverse. So I don't know. I'm going to change the, the fluid. Um, I don't know if it's something I did when I installed it. The gearbox, I don't know if that... It was all working fine um, when I drove it home originally. So I don't know if there's... Yeah, but I do have spare parts on the other car. I can change things if I need to. Um and worst case scenario, I can I can drop the gearbox and um, swap the gearbox out or inspect it, you know. But it is running anyway. I've driven it up and down the driveway and it, it's it's moving. So um, the clutch just feels a bit light and doesn't really bite until you press it in at the end. So the fluid you can see from this picture and even now that the um, the brake clutch fluid uh, is full and you know it, it looks okay i don't know if there's any air in the system who knows but uh, i might as well just fly you know flush the system and put new stuff in see if that fixes it i've got you know different parts i can swap off the other one um yeah i've got a few more mods uh, not mods but you know things to do to put back on this uh build and then it should be all good and I can register it and put it back on the road, go for a cruise. And then work on the, the mods that I want to do, which is not too much. Um, and yeah, so that, that's the fuel tank that I dropped. Swapped the fuel filter. I, I may need to drop the tank again because I put in uh, a new fuel filter, one of the um, ones that I can't remember what it's called now. The ones that people use when they turbo these things at higher fuel, fuel flow rate and um the t ti one whatever it is um 
and it doesn't really fit up to the standard bracket, the fuel filter bracket. So I had to sort of like dodgily cram it in there and I didn't cable tie it or anything. It, it sort of just wedged in there a bit. So I, I'm slightly concerned that it may be sort of flopping around a bit and disconnect at some point. So I, yeah, I don't want to leave it like that too long. Um, dropping the tank's a bit of a pain because um, you've got to do it all under the car. Um, but I've done it a couple of times now, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy, really. Um, yep, um, that, that's sort of it. That's where I'm up with the build. Um, the thing's running now and there's, you know, a few things I've just got to chuck back on it and we'll be good. And hopefully, um, I'll have this thing finished in, you know, in, let's say next month you know, because it's the end of this month, and I'll be out driving around, and, um, yeah, I'm, I want to take this thing to do some track days, um, and just a bit of fun driving, but, yeah, I definitely want to take it to, uh, Malala, and then the Bend, um, I'm not sure what sort of races I'd sort of be doing but there's just general track days just for fun and there's some other events and things that I might be looking to to put this thing in but um that's sort of where I'm at with the build and um yeah stay tuned because I think I will if you if you've been following this and you've listened to me this far um yeah I will be doing more mods to this thing and I, I will do, you know, an updated video at some point in the near future talking about what I've done and, uh, you know, either mods to the engine, the body kit or 3D printing parts, this and that, or just some track day footage or something around or rather like that. All right. Thanks for sticking around this long and I'll see you in the next one.